Hey everyone, Stacks here. Welcome to the channel. Today I am checking out Venom 2099, number one, written by Jody Hauser, artist Francisco Mobley, and Geraldo Borges. Borges? I don't know. Uh, and colors by Rachel Rosenberg. This gorgeous cover here is by Clayton Crane, who is one of my favorite artists. He mostly does covers now, but he is he is top notch. He's like by, like I said, by far my favorite artist. Some of his covers recently for like Venom number no. seven and some of his Cosmic Ghost Rider covers have just been, I mean, just insanely good. But anyways, let's get into the book. So it begins with this doctor who is experimenting on the Venom symbiote. And he's basically tearing it apart strand by strand, extracting it into as small of samples as possible. And he says that he's trying to understand his capabilities, how the cellular bonding works, and how this can be applied medically. Because as we know, Venom has that ability where he can he can purge um, sickness, he can pur he can help heal, he he does all of that stuff. And they specifically are wanting to use him for this uh, this illness called skull fire. And while all this is happening, the Venom symbiote is sitting there screaming because it's basically being torn apart. From there, we jump to a lab in Alchemex where you have Aaliyah Bell. And she has, you can see on her left arm, she has this skull fire illness. And she is going to receive an experimental treatment from Alchemex that they're calling Venom. This treatment right now is completely experimental. And it's the only reason that she has access to it is because her father, Russell, works for Alchemex. He doesn't, however, have the clearance to even be in the room when they do this, when they give her this transfusion. Once left alone, Leah Prince points out something that's pretty obvious, and that's Venom is a creepy name for something that's supposed to be curing people. But the doctor laughs it off and tells him, look, it's just a code name. If this thing works, this could change the face of modern medicine. This is a effectively a cure-all. Now, let's make you better. And they begin the transfusion, and he starts warning her that there's gonna be some potential side effects, and one of them is really unusual and, and very vivid dreams, perhaps even related to trauma you experienced. That is, <laughs> there's nothing to worry about, they're only dreams. And she's having all these flashbacks to, I mean, she at, one of them is a car accident, it looks like, involving her mother. Um, and then you have Null, you have Spider-Man in the black suit, you have Venom, you have the bell ring, and you have all these callbacks, not only to her life, but to Venom's. And it's laid out on this really awesome two-page spread that looks really good. And when the treatment's over, she wakes up, and her, she wakes up to her dad sitting there crying, and he's just saying it worked, it really worked. And he's sitting there crying because his baby girl is, you know, is cured. That's, I get that, so... She looks down at her hand and it's it's fine. It's 100%. She she can make a fist. Her, there's no scarring, nothing. Now, one thing following the treatment she has to do is she has to wear this this bracelet that is she's told is meant to uh, monitor her vitals and all that kind of stuff. However, once she gets into an argument at school and some bully decides to break it, she runs off out of panic because she's, I mean... This is experimental stuff. Her dad shouldn't even be, you know, really involved with it. And given his position, this is like a huge opportunity for. Her. And this kid went and broke the bracelet, so she's assuming her dad's gonna kill her. And once she runs into this, it looks like a band room closet. She's sitting there, you know, oh man, my dad's gonna kill me. And she hears this voice, kill. And she she looks around trying to find out who said that. And she, I must be going crazy, crazy. And then her hand, the, the her left arm that was uh, had the skull fire virus or whatever in it, turns to the black venom hand, and she starts freaking out. She she grabs a, a cover off the drum set, covers up her arm, and says, "Look, I, I just got to get home before anyone sees." Once she gets home, she tries to scrub this thing off. She tries to clean it. She tries to. She actually grabs a knife and is acting like she's gonna go cut it off. When Venom's like, "No, we ain't doing that." reaches out, grabs it, snaps the knife in half, and tells her, no, we need to talk. So she goes and, and sits down on her bed, looking at her hand, and says, okay, arm, you want to talk? We can talk. And the Venom symbiote says, not arm, a piece. A piece of what? Bean. Space. Like an alien? So an alien, I have an alien for an arm. Other symbiote. 
and and this is part of the treatment. No, a trap for us both. And once Venom tells her it's a trap, he shows her the back in the Vietnam uh, era where they tried to experiment with the symbiote from the Grendel on the soldiers and it drove them crazy. Soldiers like Rex Strickland who would eventually help out Eddie Brock against the Grendel. But Venom lays out all of it, how they tried before, how they made the symbiotes into weapons and how they lost control and how they're going to do the same thing to her. They're going to do the same thing to them again. And the symbiote tells her, free us, fix us, help us, because he's just a portion. He knows that the rest of his entire symbiote is there inside Alchemist. And that's what he tells her. He said, with the with the, the arm band, the monitor being gone, Alchemex is gonna come to you. So we have to do this. We have to do this fast. And the motivations for uh, Leah here aren't all selfless. Or she, she has an alien living in her arm. So she actually says, look, if we go to Alchemex and we can combine you, we can get you whole again, then you will stop being in my arm and I can get back to being normal, right? And with everything going on, they know they have to do this fast, so they head that way. As she comes in, I'm assuming she uses her father's scan card, uh, but she comes in, she looks at her arm, says, look, wh where do I go? And she's immediately met by two security guards at gunpoint, asking her what she's doing here. And she tries to come up with an excuse, and like, oh, I left my book when I was here for a procedure. And the symbiote's like, nope, no talk. Well, it lunges at them, and they immediately open fire. But he, he shields uh, Leah from any gunfire, and quickly just reaches out and eliminates both of these guards. And of course, she's freaked out right away because he just killed both of them. He just speared both of them right through the chest. And she's like, you you killed them. And he's like, no, I protected you. And she points out again, like, I didn't want to. And she Venom's like, it was you or them. And she's like, why did it have to be either? They only attacked because they thought you were a monster. I don't want to prove them right. And, and Venom almost gets, gets sarcastic. Oh, little Aaliyah, monsters survive. From there, they enter the lab where you have all this, the symbiote slithers that have been cut off and they are under some kind of security system. She tries to grab one, but it shocks her. So she goes to the security panel, starts disabling it. And once she does, she gets blasted right in the back. And of course we find out it's the doctor who's standing there above her, just can't believe that his lab was breached by a child. And he, he's just smug about it. He's like, ah, no real damage. I mean, there's so many potential subjects out there waiting to be healed. But as this is happening, all these small symbiote slithers are starting to ping back and forth off the glass within their tubes. And they manage to crack it and they immediately rush to her aid. They encase her and then she is immediately starting to be healed by Venom. And he just smiles, looks at the doctor and says, oh, that's so much better. And Venom immediately goes after Dr. Russell, slices off his arm once he pulls a gun on him, and says, Look, you won't hurt us again, either of us. And the doctor's just backing away with one arm, saying, You, you can't. Oh, yes, we can. She is not dying. She is healing. And for that, she owes me dinner. Unless, yeah, yeah, yes, anything. All of your data on us. Delete it. Uh, of course. I'll, I'll, I'll need just a moment. And then he goes over, starts one-handing his way through the keyboard. And once Venom has confirmed with him that everything has been deleted, he goes ahead and says, Do you know what it feels like to be sliced apart, Doctor? Again and again and again and again. Carved down to the tiniest mewing bits. Let us show you. And we jump to the next scene where the conversation starts with, You can't do that again. With and Venom responding, he was delicious. That's like, okay, that's, that's just gross. But the two get to talking and they discuss, look, you know, maybe I don't get to be normal. And the and Venom tells him, look, I, I know you've seen hurt. I still feel it. Fire and cruelty threaded through your mind. Scars that aren't so easily erased. And she tells him, look, I can live with scars, but I can't live with being one that's causing them. And Venom just kind of sighs and says, another one who wants to be a hero, of course. And she looks up and smiles and says, can we do that? Can we protect other people's protected? Like you protected me. And Venom tells her, we protect each other. And yes, perhaps others as well. Well, she takes that opportunity to go drop in on the bully that had broke her armband earlier and scare her. I mean, not do anything, just drop in, scare the fire at her. She runs off. 
and right after this happens, something hits Venom out of nowhere and he starts screaming, no, not now, not now. Looks in the mirror and you have the downward, downward spiral of Null on his forehead and he's speaking in the other language. Fortunately, right at this time, the bell, the school bell rings and it disrupts Venom enough to where he can regain control and he's freaking out saying, dead, he was supposed to be dead. And Leia's trying to figure out what was that? And he's explaining to her, look, I sense him. He isn't dead at all. He's here on Earth. And of course, they're talking about Null. And that's it. That's uh, Venom 2099, number one. I actually really enjoyed this book. Uh, I started out first few pages. I didn't know which direction it was going to go. It felt very similar to um, the, the relationship the way it was kind of built up in the um, uh, Venom movie, but without, you know, having to take a character like Eddie Brock and completely dismantle him from what he was. You know what I mean? That movie was kind of hard to accept with no Spider-Man and all that stuff involved. But this, this is 2099. It's a completely different uh, scenario, and it works. It works a lot better, in my opinion. I, I really enjoyed it. I, I like... Uh, the the symbiote relationship uh, with her uh, I, I, I'm interested to see where they go with this I'll, I don't know how many issues they're actually gonna go or is this gonna become an ongoing um, I haven't checked out the solicitations on it but I'm also interested that uh, Noel is here and that apparently whatever happens he's not gonna be defeated he's gonna pop his head up in 2099 and we can continue to deal with him on forever anyways guys any of you reading the 2099 2099 event let me know what you thought down in the comments below of this book. Did it? Where did it rank? Did it fit in with everything? And uh, guys, that's all I got for today. So make sure you, if you aren't subscribed, hey, thanks for visiting the channel. I hope you hit that subscribe button and come back. Uh, leave a like. It always helps the channel, helps uh, attract more viewers. And finally, leave a comment, of course. I want to hear what you guys think about the book. I appreciate y'all watching. Hope you have a great weekend. That's all I got. Go Comic Stacks. Out.